Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. For Rock or Not today, we're going to take a look at this 73 Les Paul Custom Black Beauty. About a week ago, I shared this on my Facebook page. If you're interested in getting alerts on deals that are just not quite sweet enough for me to buy them or just see some really cool guitars on top of what I share daily here, you can follow me there. Sometimes I also post them in my community section for YouTube. But this one received some mixed views. Some people thought it reminded them of the Widow series. Some just loved the look of the guitar. Others wanted me to buy it and review it. And then there were the skeptical people. So let's go ahead and take a look at it and get my opinion. So here it is, the 73 Black Beauty listed for $4,000. Clearly, the most eye-popping feature here is how ambered over the lacquer is of this guitar. This isn't how most Les Paul Customs age. This thing has either been in a bunch of smoky bars that has ambered over the finish. It's possible it's absorbed a bunch of UV light on top of that, but it's also possible that this has been refinished. I don't have the 100% answer, but I'm leaning towards real. Here's how I view this. A lot of people don't realize that it's not the binding itself that ages and turns colors as these things get older and get exposed to the elements. It's just the clear coat lacquer. So that explains phenomenons like the S right here being white. That's simply because the lacquer has chipped off in that area, exposing the mother of pearl underneath. In this area right here, my best guess is a stand might have came in contact with that area and broke off some of the finish. So that's why you see more of the cream colored binding right there. But then I had some people questioning this. Why is the binding along the neck not aged? That one's actually pretty easy to answer too. And looking at a widowed series guitar will really help us see this. The top portion of the binding where the fret nibs are doesn't actually have lacquer over it even in a regular situation. So what you're seeing there is quite simply just the true color of the binding. So that mix match actually makes perfect sense here. And you can see the body has some light chips in the finish like right there and in a few other locations. So everything here is actually looking pretty okay to me anyways. The knobs look aged correctly. If you take a closer look at the truss rod cover, it's not as white as it might appear from far away. The only thing that's a little bit goofy is the pick guard doesn't really seem to have aged that much. And the guitar seems to be in really good condition considering how aged the lacquer is. However, I know firsthand that pictures can be very deceiving. This could just be a super awesome polish job. Or sometimes display kept guitars do age like this. But we do need to get it out of the air that this is not actually a 1973 Black Beauty as a few other commenters noticed. But what year is it? Well first off you can take a look at these knobs. Those were not used in the early 70s. These top hat reflector knobs, they were kind of only used around like 75, 77 or so as it comes to Les Paul Customs. Another feature that you can see is this is a Nashville styled bridge, whereas a 73 would have an ABR1 drilled directly into the guitar. These tuners are another dead giveaway. I think you can start to see those as early as like very late 74. I think most people quote like 1975. And the other thing is it's really hard to see here, but if you zoom in, you can actually see the serial number decal and it reads zero zero. That leading zero zero on a decal serial number means it was made in late 1975. As far as what the neck is made of, it's a three piece something. It would either be mahogany or maple because this is like the transition point for that. The bone nut is kind of what makes me lean towards mahogany. A quick look under here would tell us for sure though. As far as the rest of the construction goes, as well as the parts, I think everything lines up. I mean, he doesn't have any photos of like the backside of the pickups to judge from. So this evaluation is only as good as the photos that the seller provided. Pending a blacklight investigation, I would be willing to say that this is correct and was potentially gigged, or it was stored in a completely unsuitable environment for it. Now, earlier I was saying not all Les Paul Customs age like this. There is one particular 72 black Les Paul Custom that has always stuck in my mind since the first day I saw it. And it belongs to a My Les Paul Forum member, and its name is Oscar. It's this beautifully heavily aged ambered over guitar with tons of finish checking everywhere. But what's really cool about it being a 72 is it has the embossed Gibson pickup covers. But you can see the headstock on Oscar, huh? That looks way different to the one we're looking at here, right? 
That's just because the lacquer's actually chipped off on this area. If the lacquer was still there, it would look very similar to this one. And I wanted to address this comment. The legitimacy of this one is spooky. It's being sold out of Malaysia and something doesn't feel right. I'll show you guys a cool trick here. Because I know as an American buyer, I felt the same way before. Because I just think, you know, anything that's not like Canada or some of the more popular countries in Europe or the USA, I'm just not really quite sure what to think of what their whole world looks like. How could a Gibson Les Paul exist there, right? I mean, it might be kind of a backwards way of thinking for many people, but here is the place that this guitar is supposedly located at. Let's just drop our little guy here and you can actually get a street view of what it looks like. This looks just like a town around me. Obviously there's some culturally different things here. Like it looks like everybody just has like a back gate to their house that they can also park their car in. But you could have a lot of fun with this and move your guy around all over town. I mean, this looks like just a regular place. So while this guitar has definitely came a long way since the mid seventies, I wouldn't necessarily discriminate just against where this thing is located. If you ever have doubts, just take a look. I mean, heck, there's a shell station. I've got one of those about 30 minutes from me. And there's also one in Malaysia. So for today's playing demo, let's go ahead and check out that Brazilian Les Paul Custom from 1975. <laughs> Question left, would you rock this mysterious 1975 Gibson Les Paul Custom or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. Tell me if you think it's the original finish or refinished, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. Hey, it's kind of a late upload, so let's do a little bit of bonus content here. Just how common is it to find a 70s Les Paul Custom that has been refinished. I just happened to make this search for a 79 Les Paul Custom while making this video, and I found two refinished ones that aren't being disclosed as refinished. So you've got this one right here, and you've got this one right here. Now I don't want you to harass these sellers or anything, but clearly this has been refinished. They didn't do rim burst jobs back in the 70s. But just to err on the side of the caution, you know, maybe it was a crazy custom order. I mean, the finish looks pretty good. It's kind of how they would spray them back in this era. But the big dead giveaway is once you get to the back of the neck. You can see this area is clearly shot darker, potentially to hide a headstock repair. You can tell the tuners have also been replaced. And my favorite oopsie is right here. Because that should just be a dark stain because that's the maple cap exposed, but it looks like they shot it the same color as the top. But unfortunately, they're calling it all original. And here's another one that I think this guy just got scammed on a long time ago and doesn't even realize that this used to be wine red. Natural customs are a thing of beauty. Gibson usually reserves the best wood for them. But in this era, they still had three piece maple tops, so that's not why I can tell this has been refinished. It's because look, you can actually see the red staining from when it was once a wine red. And I've seen lots of wine reds that have these kind of mix match semi flamed tops. I'm not quite sure what's going on with this pickup. But here you can also see how stained red the back also is. And you can see the orange peeling in the finish. And hey, while we're at it for bonus content, let's take a look at this SG real quick that I posted. It's an SGR1, so you can check out this video if you want to learn a little bit more about that. Basically an SG artist, but somebody's taken the neck from it and put it on a custom-made oak body. 
This thing just kind of looks cool to me. I shared it because I thought it was a fair deal at $500 and 50 shipping. Now you might question my logic with that, but remember these knobs, you can get probably about 80 bucks from them because they're original. Pickups are not original, but if they are DiMarzios and are vintage, you can probably get, you know, 100, 150 bucks. If it still has the original R1 electronics in there, you can probably get about 200 there. And they said that the neck is just bolted on, but it's been modified. I could still see somebody paying at least a hundred bucks for that neck. Those tuners, their original Gibsons, you can get at least a hundred there. And then the chainsaw case, despite only having one latch, I mean, I feel that this is still priced fairly enough that it could be parted out even for a profit, yeah. So if you want a quirky player, it's not the worst deal ever. So if you didn't learn anything else from this video, sometimes it can be a gamble buying online. And if you're ever unsure, you can head on over to my website and I do offer private help sessions. It's a dollar for me to tell you if it's real or not. If you need more information, it's five bucks. And then I can also give you a market evaluation for 10. For my skill set, I believe that's more than fair. You can also get that service over on Patreon, as I just recently updated my reward system. And I do owe a shout out to my latest one, Joe Dukes. Thank you for your support. If you got any questions, you can let me know. And also a shout out to Wilson. All right, troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today, and we will see you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.